Now, of course, there's so many things that we can learn from this that apply to the present day. And the first thing I want to consider is uh, why did Jon Snow succeed when others failed? He wanted to keep his patients alive and well. He was passionate about his work. He was passionate about human life. I think that was a big reason why he succeeded. He was distraught by the suffering and death he worked amongst. Now, if you read his writings, you can see that the guy was really suffering with his, pa with his patients. He was in the area. He knew the smells. He could hear the sound of the bereaved relatives. He knew what it was like to be in this suffering, and he fought against it with everything he had in his being. This is the level of commitment that, that we need in all times, especially today. He was motivated by a concern for his people. He had a good understanding of the science of his day, which of course is important. He was an advocate of germ theory as opposed to miasma theory. And it's often said that fortune favours the prepared mind. So we still need to do our homework. He realised prevention was better than cure. I mean, what a simple principle. Why don't we stop these people dying <laughs> rather than uh, treat them when they get sick? Because by the time someone had uh, cholera, they were often very dehydrated. The, the stool just runs out like water. And people, people become dehydrated, fluid and electrolyte imbalance, hypovolemic shock and death can occur really quite quickly, especially in children. Terrible, uh, terrible disease. And at that time, they wouldn't have the ability to rehydrate and fluid resuscitate as we have uh, today. Although still, cholera is a remarkably dangerous disease today. Um, realistic lifestyle choices. Realise that lifestyle choices are critical for health. The water that you drink, where you get your water supply is critical. Who else was involved? Um, now, the, uh, the population of patients accepted his medical opinion. So the patients respected what their doctor told them. And the local authorities shared a concern for the population under their charge. They took seriously their duty of care. So we had a situation in St. James's Parish, in Soho, in that area, in 1854, where the, the local government, the parish council, cared deeply for the well-being of its citizens and followed the advice of their respected medical leader. Is that always the case today, I hear you ask? Right, let's make some, some of my observations about this case. Um, widespread ignorance made uh, disease essentially inevitable. So yes, the conditions were appalling, but the main, uh, condition, the main problem arguably was ignorance. If you can keep people in ignorance, um, they're more controllable, aren't they? But these people were ignorant of what was causing this. Is ignorance a problem today? Let me know what you think. No money was made when he removed the pump handle. It was motivated by concern for humanity and the science. So no money was made. Uh, would this still be the case today or is money more important? Taking the pump off the handle cost nothing. It was free to do. It was a free intervention. No vested interest opposed his work. No one tried to actively suppress the new discovery. So here's a new idea. No one said, oh, this is a new idea. This could save lives. Better hush this up. Um, because really what we want to be doing is selling people, I don't know, cures or something like that. You know, if, if people are, uh, if you take the pump off the handle and you stop people getting sick, could be a good wasted business opportunity potentially. So anyway, that didn't happen. I'm pleased to say there was no well-funded, well-connected, powerful vested interests opposing his work. Therefore, his work went ahead. He was heard. No international organisations opposed his work or tried to suppress, suppress his findings. That didn't happen, thankfully. Corporate and national interests did not make money from uh, the intervention but they supported it anyway. So the local government and the local businesses supported what he was doing anyway, despite the fact they weren't making money from it. Work was not opposed by powerful, rich individuals. So there was no uh, millionaires coming round trying to interfere 
with Jon Snow's work. He was free to investigate. He was free to collect the data. He was free to publish the data without any obstruction. Uh, no one called what he was doing harmful misinformation. And he didn't receive death threats. Life-saving discovery was not suppressed by national regulatory bodies. In fact, the national bodies supported him. So there was no suppression of information by national regulatory bodies. National and international bodies did not claim there was insufficient data and insist on a multi-million dollar randomised controlled trial. You really think this works, Dr. Snow? Well, well, come, 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 come. We need a randomised double-blind controlled trial on this. It's going to cost us $20 million. We need at least a 1,000 people in it. And we're going to need some professionals to organise it. You get out of the way, you bumbling amateur. It didn't happen. So he succeeded. Lives were saved. So no one insisted on silly amounts of further data. Publishers helped to distribute the new knowledge. So this was in the newspapers. It was lauded. It was published. It was spread abroad, literally abroad, throughout the UK and throughout the world. And uh, people who'd never heard of England and all London benefited from this discovery. Absolutely brilliant. No one opposed, no, no one used oppressive censorship to silence him. So he wasn't oppressed by censorship. He was allowed to speak freely. He was not deplatformed by media organisations. Wonderful. He and his ideas were not personally attacked by the legacy media. They promoted his work. The helpful intervention was not opposed by people who could make money from the sick. Relevant publications were not written by people who could make money from selling cures or vaccines. This simply didn't happen. Counter-argument was accepted and adjudicated by the evidence. Now, there is uh, famous cases of people who debated with Jon Snow, who, who was in favour of germ theory. Other people believe the miasma theory, which is uh, the disease is caused by bad air. That's where we get the term malaria from. Um, but quite a few people, because of Jon Snow's reasoning and science and evidence, changed their mind. They changed their mind. They said, you know what, John? I used to believe in miasma theory, but because of the evidence you've given me, I now realise that germ theory is correct. I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to change my mind because you have presented me with evidence. This is what we have to be prepared to do. Follow the evidence wherever it leads. So counter-argument was accepted. There was no, uh, this is my position and I'm sticking to it, mate. The principle of disease mapping went on to save millions of lives and still is today, of course. Taking the pump off the handle became a common expression. So these days, for example, if you want to, when we wanted to prevent lung cancer, by telling people to stop smoking, that would be taking the handle off the pump. Now, there's lots of pumps today with lots of handles. We need to take lots of handles off lots of pumps today. Let me know what pumps you think these are and what the handles might represent. I can think of lots and lots of examples, but I don't want this video to last forever. Finally, uh, would he be able to succeed today? Uh, let me think about that one. Uh, I've thought about that one. No, I don't think he would. For all these reasons that were mentioned. Because right now in London, I can think of half a dozen brilliant doctors and scientists whose work is not listened to. In England, in the United States, I've talked to famous doctors, scientists, statisticians, biochemists all around the world whose work is simply not listened to. There are many pumps still pumping out water contaminated by cholera. 
we need to identify the pumps, identify what the handle is, remove the handle and take away or at least massively reduce the human pain, suffering and death caused by that contaminated water. In memory of Dr John Snow, 1813 to 1858.